Hey, good morning, Empower Living Community. Great to be with you on a Saturday. Um, I'm pre-recording this message because right now uh, I'm just ending in a studio where I've been teaching the free sales course. So if you haven't registered for the free sales course, you can still go ahead and do it. The replay is going to be alive uh, for, I think, about 48 hours. So if you want, you can click on the link below uh, and you'll get all of the information. Uh, on how you can take the four-week uh, sales uh, camp. The thousands have signed up for it. I, th I think you're going to really enjoy it. If you were just over with me <laughs> during the sales training, then you know it was epic. And thank you for joining. Um, you know, t we've been, we've been uh, f for the last, oh, I don't know, probably 10 weeks or so, been doing a series based on my mentorship program called Fully Resourced. And... Um, in the in the in the fully resourced program, uh, it it comes with live access to me every single month through through Q and A, uh, and so what I thought I would do is I, I would answer uh, just a couple of questions today um, that we get asked you know along the the journey of somebody going through the program, um, and so w w one of the pr one of the questions that we get asked often is where people people have a challenge kind of seeing the future right so i know what my goal is i kind of know what my dream is but you know i i teach in the program that you should be writing kind of a detailed vision of what that future life looks like and many people are like me and have a really hard time visualizing things i'm not a visual learner i'm a kinetic learner and so uh, here, here's what the any given, it's called the, it's called the any given Tuesday exercise is what I call it. And what it means is I, I call it that because of Henry David Thoreau's quote where he says, if one advances confidently in the direction of the dream, endeavors to live the life that they imagine, they will meet with success at unexpected common hours. What does that mean? Unexpected common hours. It means like any given Tuesday, like out of the blue. Like you're working on something and you're working on something and then all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Like, oh my gosh, like you weren't expecting. It's like any given Tuesday. And so this exercise is, if you could think about your ideal life, the life you would just really love to live on any given Tuesday. So it doesn't have to be like some like dream like like one day, you know, I, I'm living in a castle or it's, it doesn't have to be some Cinderella moment. Ideally, what I would like you to have is rather than some like once in a lifetime experience vision, I would like you to, to have a, just a real day. What would it be like? So as an example, now you got to remember when I, when, I, when I was doing this exercise, I was living in a two bedroom apartment with four other guys, right? So there's five of us and it's not because, you know, we loved each other. It's because we couldn't afford to, to live without each other, you know, financially. And I was making probably $20,000 a year and I was cleaning toilets at night, okay? So that's, that's the Paul Martinelli that's, that's writing what I'm about to say. And, 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 I'm, and I'm starting to read this book. And of course, when I'm, when, I'm, you know, when I'm starting to read the book, the book's brand new. It doesn't look like this, okay? And so I start to write that, you know, okay, I wake up and I, and I, and I roll over and, and I see the sunrise. I, I push the button and my electronic shades go up. You know, my, you know, the electronic blinds go up and I can see the beautiful sunrise, you know, coming up. As I lie in bed, I'm there and I've had this feeling of great gratitude. And so I'm writing about how, how grateful I feel and how proud I feel for have overcoming all those obstacles that I had for years. And as I look out to the sun sunrise, I can hear Vicky. Now, Vicky was the girl who who worked for me, uh, who was one of our cleaners. And so, you know, I put her name in just to make it real. I hear Vicky coming in, and I can hear the sound of the juicer. Right. So I have her making me fresh squeezed orange juice. I can smell the smell of coffee. I get up, I go out, and I sit on the balcony to watch the sunrise 
you know, and I'm describing what I'm seeing. I'm describing seeing, you know, the the fins of the dolphins, you know, and the tracks of the turtles up on the beach. And then I and then I write about how, you know, Vicky comes through the slider and brings me orange juice and the newspaper, right? So this is back in 1991, right? So I wasn't there were there were newspapers back then, right? And I'm having fresh fruit on my balcony, and I and I look over at my you know list of things to do today, and I have all these paying clients, and all of my cleaning crews are you know are scheduled with really profitable jobs, and I'm visioning a marble cleaning division, I'm visioning a carpet cleaning division, I'm visioning a. Uh, a, a construction cleaning division. All of those things were truly visions. Now, I later would go on and build a multi-million dollar company and, you know, each of those departments would be worth, you know, a half a million to a million dollars a year in billions alone, right? But when I was writing this, I was struggling, right? But that was my vision. And I visioned what kind of car, where I was going to dinner that night, what I was going to wear, the kinds of friends I was... And I was writing out how I was feeling about myself, how I was feeling grateful, you know, how I was feeling proud of myself. You know, I was, I was feeling accomplished. I had this great sense of certainty. I had this great sense of anticipation for what's next in my life. I wasn't no longer filled with doom and gloom about what the future could hold. I was no longer felt like I was playing life roulette you know, it's kind of spinning, you know, spinning the chamber of the gun and hoping, you know, that nothing bad would happen. Because, you know, my life very much felt like that, that I was out of control, that, you know, it was the spin of the wheel. And, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, the, the, the little clicker landed on, that was going to be my fate. And, and I had no control. And, you know, unless you're, in, unless you've lived like that or you're, you're, you're facing that experience, you don't understand the stress and the anxiety and the worry. And so this is a tough exercise for a lot of people because to get to, to it's not just that you have to step into the future. You've got to step out of the current in order to step into that future. So give yourself some time to do this exercise. But I can tell you this, it's one of the most powerful things you'll do. I can honestly say that I have filled up you know, you, you think of like notebooks. I've got a couple of like one of these. Hold on one second. You know, like these kinds of notepads, right? Right. I I have I've I I don't know hundreds, hundreds of these, hundreds of these stacks of these, just with any just with this exercise of every given Tuesday, just writing and rewriting and rewriting o over the years. I've 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 never I've never written in in every given Tuesday, any given Tuesday exercise, and it not come to pass. Never. As a matter of fact, I I've I've never known anybody who's done the exercise the way I teach you to do it. If and, 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 and you just keep doing it. You keep doing it until it manifests. You know, when do you stop? You stop when it manifests. Until it manifests, it's being subject to the law of gender. I, I, I've, I've, nev I've never known somebody who's not done it. As a matter of fact, I'm working with somebody who, 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 who's in our mastermind group right now. And this, this gentleman has been doing this, I think, for three or four years. And he, and he just sent me an email of how he was away with his family and they were on vacation and, and th there was kind of a, a crisis where they were staying, a water pipe had broken and, and the whole family kind of had to up and move. And, and before, that would have been like devastation because they wouldn't have had the money to have options. And he said how, how just proud he was that he could say to his family, don't worry, it's, it's all good, grandkids, his children, his wife, spouses, you get the picture. And here he was, and you know, okay, no problem. Plan A didn't work out. Because I've got finances, there's a plan B and, and I can afford it. 
But what a great, what, what a great sense of freedom. You know, and he said, you know, I wrote in my book that I would be able to handle any kind of crisis for my family, that, that I would be able to help my family in, in any time, that I'd never be again like held hostage, have my options held hostage as the money. And I wrote that, and here it was. And so I really encourage you, and as you go through the fully resourced program, those of you who are in it, um, as I guide you through that exercise, I tell you, you know, don't go forward and don't go, don't go to the next piece of the lesson until you've done this, right? Um, and if, if, if you haven't gone through the fully resourced program yet, I, I encourage you to join it. Um, and and when, when, it, when you get to this exercise, take this exercise seriously. Because if you think about it, this is a process that I call remembering your future. We, we're in the program now through this series that I'm teaching on, on Facebook, where I'm introducing you to the six intellectual faculties. One of those intellectual faculties is our memory. And most people think that your, your memory works one way, right? We think that you know, our memory is about the past. Well, it, it's not. Your memory works both ways. Your memory works both in the future and in the past. What, what, what I know memory to be and what most people call memory are different. Most people, what most people call memory, I call recall. It's where you recall a stored experience, whether it's real or imagined. So like you can have, you can have a nightmare that was not a real experience and you can recall it, you can remember it, into your conscious mind. Well, your memory works works both ways. In other words, you can create future events. You can just as you can uh, just as you can kind of remember your past experiences real or imagined, you can also imagine future experiences. Now this sounds crazy, but you do it all the time. When you're when you're getting ready to go away, let's say you're going to take a cruise, you put that suitcase you know, on the bed to get ready, and you imagine the seven-day cruise. Okay, day number one, where we're gonna be? Okay, we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be in, in the Virgin Islands. We're taking a, you know, a catamaran ride for the day. What do I wanna wear? That night, we have dinner at the steakhouse on the ship. What do I wanna wear? And so you go to the future, and you think about what do I want? What are you saying? What do I want to wear? What do I want to look? What energy do I want to project? How do I want to feel? And then you go to your closet and you find those things that match that future state that you created. You remember it. So your memory is the, is the, is the activity of storing real or imagined experiences. And once stored, it never goes away. It's stored in your subconscious mind. It never goes away. It's just a, it's a composite of cells of energy that are activated when you begin to think. So when you begin to think of this, it activates those cells and the images and the information captured in those cells, bang, flash on the screen of your mind. And now, now we have the idea. And so you had the ability to imagine your future to remember, to, 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 to put those future, that future experience in your memory. And then as you write it, remember it. And as you live it, remember it. And the whole goal here is, is in the, in the uh, Any Given Tuesday exercise, is as, as you write this future state memory, you're identifying the feeling tone, the energy signature of what that life would look like for you. Okay, and, and what you're doing, you're then coming back to your current life and you're saying, what in my life, who in my life is not a match for that energy signature? What people, what things around my house, what relationships, what habits, right? Do not match that future state. What in my life 
is creating this competing commitment to me being, doing, or having that. This is, this is what Thomas Troward says in, in, in his essay on completeness, is that nothing new needs to be added to you. For most of us, to, to create the lives we want, we have to let go of things that are not in harmony with the future state. That's all, that's all we have to do. But it's also why the Buddhist religion said that you know, attachment is the source of all suffering. Some of those clothes that no longer, no longer fit, they're no longer a match for, 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 for where you want to go in your life. You go to your closet to throw them away. You think, eh, you know, you know, I paid a lot for that sweater. I paid a lot for that suit. It, 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 it's not a match for what you want. There's people in your life right now that you know hold you back. There's people in your life, and you know who they are right now, that are just energy vampires in your life. But... You're used to it. You kind of settled for it. You've built an attachment to it. You become attached to it emotionally. Sometimes we become attached to people financially. There's people in your life that are toxic for you. There's people in your life who don't support you, who don't believe in you, who challenge you every step of the way. Who, who aren't cheering you on. And you know who some of those people are. You need to let them go. Now, I'm not saying you don't know, ever talk to them again. You know, I don't think you have to, you know, I'm not saying to d divorce yourself of them or have some falling out, but, you know, don't go as often and don't stay as long. That's all. Don't go as often and don't stay as long. I remember as I was, you know, beginning my journey into personal growth, my, my journey started with forgiveness. And, you know, I grew up in a, in a really toxic environment. The, the home of my childhood was not safe. It wasn't safe emotionally. It wasn't safe physically. And as I began my journey, I, I realized that, you know, I would never be able to be, do, and have all that I could be without, without forgiveness. That's why I wrote the three missing chapters of Think and Grow Rich. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, you should especially if you're dealing with forgiveness issues. And, and I just realized that my dream wasn't gonna grow in, 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 in the soil of resentment. And so I needed to forgive. And so one of the things I had to do is, is that you know, when I would call my mom, who was my abuser, I would just limit myself to five minutes. Five minutes and that was it. And, and, and in the beginning, of that process of forgiveness, the conversations, you know, I, I called them, you know, I, I would say, you know, the water is wet, the sky is blue, kitty cats meow, and puppy dogs bark, right? In other words, I wasn't getting into big, deep, meaningful conversation with my mother. It was all I could do to just talk about the, you know, about the weather. It was all I could do about something that there could be. And then, you know, four or five minutes in, hey, got to go. Love you. Goodbye. And, but that was the start of the journey back to healing. Yeah, you have to start somewhere. And so if there's people in your life that are toxic, that hold you back, that don't support you, that are energy vampires, that when, that when, when, you know, when they leave, you actually feel better, you, 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 need, you need to put a longer gap between you and them both in distance and in the amount of time you spend with them. It's an important part. And so your future state, your dream, your ideal life, your any given Tuesday has an energy signature to it. What in your life doesn't match? A a another question that we get, and I'll, I'll do this one fairly quickly, is, is you know, what do we do when it's not working? What do we do when we have the any get every given Tuesday thing and we're we're following it? And we're, you know, I'm reading the gold card. I've you know I've I've done the six steps and thank you very rich. I'm doing all that I can do, and it's just not working. What do I do? Um, I would say what you do is you wait as one with understanding would wait. I think you got to take on you know the the farmer mentality. You know when the farmer plants corn. 
and he works real hard all day long out plowing the field and seeding it and sowing. And then the next morning, you know, he's sitting on the porch on the rocking chair and he sees the water cannons watering the field and nothing's growing. There's no sign of green. And the next day he sits on the porch and he watches. And the next day he watches. And the next day he watches. And the whole time he's watching, he's sitting there, calm, cool, collected, drinking, you know, iced tea, not worried, not anxious, because he understands the law of growth. He understands that there's an incubation and gestation period for that seed. That although he can't see the evidence of its growth with his physical senses of sight, intellectually he understands through the higher side of his nature he understands that the growth is taking place below the surface that the truth is not in the appearance of things the truth is is that it's it's growing it's rooting itself it's doing all that's necessary on the inside first you're going to have to grow inside before it shows up on the outside and there's a lot of growth. It's not just the, it's not just the, the task. F for some of us, it's for me at least, th th there were character traits that had to be cleaned up. Like, like you're not going to manifest your, your dream. Like your dream has a signature, let's, a, a, an energy signature. So let's say that energy signature is calibrated at 99.6. If you're operating down here to 72.3, it's not going to manifest yet. If, 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 if you're at a 99.4, but the dream's at 99.6, it's not going to manifest fully. Now, you might begin to see a little bit of evidence as you get that close. But everything about you has to change. Before, before this dream fully becomes realized. Your habits have to change. Your character. See, it's not just about doing the steps. It's not just about writing out your goal and reading your goal and visualizing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's called personal growth. It means you need to grow personally. You need to grow in your character. You need to grow in your judgment. You need to grow in your discernment. You need to grow in your ability to make decisions. You need to grow, you know, you, you, you have to grow in your confidence. You have to grow emotionally. You have to mature in some areas of your life. There's a lot to do aside from just holding on to the images of your future state. That's part of it. But unless the growth is taking place inside, it will never show up on the outside. And until it's taking place on the inside, it won't show up. Remember, the purpose of a goal is not to achieve the goal. The purpose of a goal is to become the person who can create and manifest that life that the goal represents. The purpose of the goal is to challenge you to grow to that. So for me, I mean, I was so negative. I'd have to walk into a dark room to develop. You know what I mean? I was, I was, I was so negative. I was so pessimistic. I was so untrusting. I was so skeptical. All of that had to change in me. The person who was going to create the life I wanted, the person who lives the life I have today, that doesn't operate that way. I was selfish. I was so self-centered. Well, the purpose, the person who was going to create the life that I was dreaming of wasn't self-centered or selfish. They, they, were, they were giving. They were life-giving. All that had to change. The, 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 you know, I, I had no self-confidence. I was full of self-judgment, full of doubt, full of worry. Well, the, the person who was living the life that I had dreamed of wasn't that way. That person was confident. That person was certain. All that had to change in me. 
So what do you do when it's not working? I think you continue to do the work. If, you know, if, if there's no evidence, it, Price Pritchard said the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. I mean, meaning that just because you don't see it doesn't mean there's not growth going on. The truth isn't always in the appearance of things. The growth may be taking place in you. And see, here, here's what will happen is maybe, may, maybe nothing changes in your bank account. Maybe nothing changes in, 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 in your client list. But you see some friends or some family who you haven't seen in six months and they say, you know what, there's something different about you. Did you get a haircut or something different about you? What, what's different about you? There's, you've got a different, like, what's, what's going on? You seem to be like in a really good place. That's their intellectual faculty of intuition picking up the shift in your vibration. There's your evidence. There's your evidence. So I just wanted to pop in and answer, you know, again, in the fully resourced program, I answer your questions once a month for two or three hours. Um, and when you enroll in the program, you can either get six months of mentoring or, or 12 months of mentoring, depending on which package you, you invest in. I really hope that, that you, you'll join the program. Also, if you haven't joined the, the sales training or if you missed it today, click on the link below and uh, make sure you register and we'll get you a copy of the replay. Thank you so much for being with us uh, on the Empower Living community and for all of our team ambassadors who have helped us uh, today, this morning with the sales program and today again with, with this. Thank you so much. You guys are fantastic. Be well, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye.